Sunderland, North East England, a city where one in three children live in poverty. 61% of voters here opted to leave the EU in 2016. Once famous for shipbuilding, it's now a major centre for the car industry. 7,000 people work here at Nissan. Neither management nor employees are available for comment during our visit. Taxi driver Michael takes us on a tour of the site. He says the factory's a bedrock of the community. There was very little work in the Sunderland area and Nissan brought lots and lots of jobs. Not just Nissan, it's also the subsidiaries of Nissan. How many people in Sunderland know someone who works for Nissan? Oh, nearly everybody, I would think. There's more cars, look, on the, on the transporter. Nissan's announced its new X-Trail will no longer be produced in Sunderland as planned, but in Japan. The company is saying the uncertainty surrounding Brexit was part of its reasoning. If Nissan did pull out the Sunderland, it would be a travesty because I think the economy in Sunderland would go down. But Michael doesn't seem that worried and has no regrets over his choice in the referendum. I voted for the Brexit, so... And I think a lot of my friends all felt the same. We, you know, we can look after ourselves. We shouldn't have people telling us what to do. And, um, do you think Nissan will leave Sunderland after Brexit? No, I don't think they'll leave Sunderland. I think the government will make sure that they don't leave Sunderland. You know, if they left Sunderland and there's 20,000 people out of work, it would cost the government too much money. This is a region which felt the economic hardship of the 1980s acutely. Jed Parker used to work for the local development corporation and remembers the tensions as shipyards and mines closed. The pits quite close to where Nissan is now were under threat. And of course, um, 1984-5 was the year of the miners' strike. It wasn't obvious when we had that decline in the basic industries of where replacement jobs would come from. Washington Jed was part of the team that bid to bring Nissan to the northeast. And this is the one that For the Japanese Nissan. giant, part of the attraction was easy access to the European market. Their arrival in 1986 came as a triumph for Margaret Thatcher's government. It was the most staggering morale boost I've ever known. Um, the whole region celebrated these were proper manufacturing jobs. Jed fears the gains of the past could soon be lost if Brexit throws Nissan's future into doubt. He says he's worried for the region. We've had that motor manufacturing specialty uh, for 30 odd years and I can't foresee what's coming down the track that will employ a significant number of people. That flows through to, uh, to less employment, which then manifests itself in, in social problems of one kind or another. But in this city centre pub, most customers are keen for Britain to exit the EU as soon as possible. Remainers claims that the Leave campaign lied about the threat posed by immigration and extra money for the health service hold little sway here. The NHS is feeling that needs a lot, a lot of money putting into it. A lot of money. Didn't Boris Johnson lie about that? Well, he did, didn't he? But... No, I vote to leave and I will stick to leaving. That's it. What do you think of the European Union? Pass. <laughs> so immigration was one of the most important yeah, interests? Yeah. Definitely, mainly, yeah. Are there too many immigrants in some? Lots. On the seafront, we meet up again with Michael. Immigration. Back to the bulk of it. Immigrants account for just 4% of Sunderland's population, but the number of foreign-born residents here has doubled over the past decade. Michael says the issue was decisive in the Brexit vote. Well, I think that's what it was. There was a lot of it immigration. There was a lot of it, um, as I say, our, our own borders and, and our laws. If people are coming into the country and they're, they're doing something for the good of the country, then fine. But if people are coming into the country and they're just getting into the country and then going on the benefits, it's, it's just not happening. As long as I can block your arm, look, I would be blocked. This is Stephen, a community activist and businessman who runs this gym where he teaches mixed martial arts. He's worried about the way the Brexit vote has split society. When we have populism uh, and we try to answer complex questions with simple, uh, simple answers, I think that is a problem. It's too divided at the moment. It's just basically like my side against your side. That ain't going to solve any problems. Stephen says quitting the EU will only exacerbate the area's economic problems and that the Leave campaign sold the public a lie. 
Do I know what I'm voting for? Does anybody know what I'm voting for? Does anybody know what Brexit is? Can anybody define it? Nobody can define it. And that's the problem that we have. <laughs> Brexit may be hard to define, but many here don't seem to regard it as a problem. <laughs>